everybody, welcome back to another InfoSec Operator tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn one of the many various ways that a deep web website can be placed into the deep web through the Tor browser. Now I do recommend that each of you only use this for fun rather than taking this information and using it for illegal activities because as we know, the deep web does have illegal websites down there. Um, as well as good ones but there are definitely illegal websites and I do not want each of you to get into any trouble and I also uh, do not condone the use of my tutorials towards anything illegal but without further ado let's go ahead and take a look at how we can build our very own deep web website using just three tools <laughs> Now, you guys do not have to be an expert web developer in order to do this. However, if you do want to get into web development, this is actually a very good way to practice it without paying for uh, websites on the surface web or hosting sites on the surface web. Now, if each of you know anything about me, I am definitely not a web developer. And to be honest, my programming skills are shy of extremely poor. So, um, I'm going to show each of you mainly how to get a simple HTML page up onto the deep web so that way you can start playing around with that and then later on you guys can go ahead and learn more web development and make that page a little bit more fancier if you will. But here's the three tools that we need to start out with. First, open up any kind of web browser that you already have whether it be Google, um, Internet Explorer or maybe you already have Tor browser you can go ahead and open that up and search for download XAMPP. XAMPP is the server that is going to allow um, our broadcast uh, of that HTML page out into the internet. Then second of course if you don't already have Tor browser go ahead and download Tor browser. If you already have it that's okay. Uh, we're not doing anything special to it until a little bit later. And then of course you're going to need a code editor. My personal preference is Visual Studio Code. Or you could even use um, Notepad++ or Atom as a alternative. So go ahead and download that. You guys don't need to do anything special. Just simply go download it. And uh, after that don't do anything to it and I'll meet you guys back after these are downloaded. Now that we have our software downloaded, we need to change some settings to our Tor browser in order to get our new deep web website address. To do this, open up any browser of your choice and search for Tor Onion Service or how to set up a Tor Onion Service within the torproject.org website. You should come to this page where you have three different options, one for Windows, one for OS X or Mac, and one for Unix and Linux. We're going to go ahead with the Windows version as I am running Windows. We're going to copy those two lines and then what we need to do is go into our Tor browser settings. So it should be on our desktop. Tor browser browser and we need to find our Tor RC file. So go into Tor Browser again, then into our data file, into Tor, and down near the bottom we see Tor RC. Double click on that, and I personally use Notepad, but you can use one of the following that your computer offers. We open it, and this file, though I already have it configured, will show up with no configuration at the bottom. Go ahead and paste the code that you copied into this file. And what we need to do though is make some changes to that code so that way it works with our specific computer. So we delete all the information that starts with the slash and ends with the slash. Then we need to go back into our file system on our computer, click on desktop, open the Tor browser file and you guys can see here that I have a hidden service file folder. This did not come with the Tor browser so you need to create your own. All you do is right click in that area, 
create new, create a new folder, and label it hidden service. Once you have that completed, open that empty hidden service folder, because your hidden service folder should be empty once you create it. Copy that address. Then we go back to our Tor RC notepad file, right click, and paste. This is going to be where Tor delivers our new Tor website address. Go ahead and save the file. You can close the file. And once we get back into our file system, head to your Tor browser file and restart your Tor browser if it's already open. Go ahead and close it and restart it by double clicking. Once you do that, mine's already been delivered, but let's go ahead and take a look here. We, you will get three different files, hostname, public key, and secret key. Public key verifies that you are in fact the owner of that website, and secret key is also another way to verify that you are the owner of that website. However, the only one that anybody should ever know is the public key. Now that's getting into cryptography, we'll save that for a different tutorial. Just know that your host name, once we open this, is your new address for your Tor website. Now originally, if you are familiar with Tor at all, we know that Tor onion addresses were much shorter. However, if you think of this in an IPv4 and IPv6, um, scenario, Tor was running out of uh, Tor Onion addresses and started extending them. So this is our new Tor Onion address. However, this does not mean that we have an up and running website because as each of you can see, I can paste it into the Tor browser, hit enter, and nothing's really going to happen because we have not configured our XAM server yet which is what we're going to do next. Now that we have all of the required software, being Exam Server, Visual Studio Code, and our Tor Browser, we want to go ahead and create our first web page and launch it out into the Tor network. To do that, we first need to start up our server. So we can go into our uh, computer's file system, go to this PC, and you're going to click on the Windows Drive and down here you can see exam. Double click that. And first we're going to go into htdocs. And what I want each of you to do is right click and create a new folder and copy and paste your Tor Onion address as the name of that new folder. Just like I did up here. Once you're done with that, we're going to go back to exam. We're going to go into our Apache server our configuration, our extra, and down here you're going to see httpd-vhosts or virtual hosts. Double click on that and I recommend that each of you use notepad or some kind of text editor. You're going to be greeted with two paragraphs of this starting with virtual host star colon 80 being our port number and these are going to have the hashtags in front of it like so up here. Delete the hashtags and what you want to do is copy and paste your onion address behind where I have. Okay, so server admin webmaster at onion address document root quotation marks c drive exam htdocs slash onion address end quote server name onion address error log quote log slash onion address dash error dot log and then same with the bottom line uh, you want to do onion address dash access dot log save your file and close it out and then we're going to start our exam server so in order to do that, now you guys see that I already have the icon on my desktop. You guys will have to create a shortcut for that as it does not uh, automatically display that icon on your desktop. So go back to this PC 
and go to Windows C, go into Exam, and scroll down to the bottom, and you're going to see the exam underscore start and exam underscore stop. There's also going to be one exam underscore control. Now I renamed mine exam and it'll be an application type file. Uh, you guys can go ahead and right click on it and run as administrator. Now mine's already up and running. I have everything set and these should automatically start. If not, just go ahead and hit start on all three of them. Uh, FileZilla is not required, it's just a file transfer protocol portion of the server and you can do FTP into that server and transfer files from the server onto your computer. Uh, the key here that we're really focused on for this tutorial is Apache. So make sure that that's started and then go ahead and launch your Tor browser and place your onion address in there. Now you guys can see I've already got my first web page already up and I'll show you guys how to do that but you're most likely going to be greeted with either a, an index page of what files are on that web page or that web server uh, or an exam welcome page. Now it may take two or three minutes for it to connect to the server since it's the first time you guys are connecting. So be patient with it. You can refresh it a couple of times or it just may simply take two or three minutes to connect and then display what I told you is going to be displayed. But in order to actually create our first web page on the server, we're going to minimize our tour and we're going to go back into our htdocs in exam. So let's go ahead up here through our files and go into our htdocs and if you guys remember correctly we created that file with your onion address so double click on that and you guys can see I already created an index html file but how did I do that well what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to place html or uh, even javascript or whatever uh, programming language you choose to place onto that website or the web server and launch it into that browser. Once you've made contact with the server, let's go ahead and open up our code editor. Mine is Visual Studio Code, so that's what we're going to go ahead and use. Uh, if you guys have a different one, such as um, Notepad++ or Atom or whatever it may be, go ahead and open that up and I'll show you guys how because no matter which language or which editor we use, we're going to save it to the same folder anyways and it's still going to go ahead and display within the Tor network. Uh, so just open up whatever text editor or code editor that you have and follow along with me. So here's the index that I have already um, done that you guys seen on my Tor website. But let's go ahead and exit out of that one. I'm going to exit out of that one and then select a new file. And let's go ahead and say that we're going to use um, HTML. So we display or we type doc type HTML and then below that define HTML. And again, this is extremely rudimentary, so please, you know refrain from commenting on how I'm a crappy programmer because I am a crappy programmer. Um, I know enough to get me through through Linux such as uh, some Python and um, even C language but I am no web developer by any means but I can simply display something. I can, I can display something simple for each of you and let's go ahead and say hello YouTube comma please subscribe okay and then we end quote that or end tag that okay and then what you want to do in order for this to actually work and be displayed onto the web you go to your file area and you want to click save as now this is my second page this is not my first page so we're gonna name it it's not going to be indexed. For each of you, it should be index.html. So, for example, index, okay, and you don't add the .html, you just simply name it index, and then you would go down and find the language that you programmed it in. So you could do HTML, 
you could do JavaScript, React, JavaScript, JSON, all the different languages, C, C++, you know, um, just save it as the uh, language that you used, preferably the, uh, a web programming language. So I would, if you're new to this, I would stick with HTML or JavaScript. But, uh, so that's, you save it as that, but I'm going to go ahead and save it as HTML. I'm going to name my page something different though. So I'm going to say different. I'm going to type different.html. Save it within the folder that we labeled under the exam htdocs and then that go inside the onion address folder that I had each of you create and save it in there. Once you've done that, go and refresh your page and you guys will see your web page, uh, your first web page on your deep web website. And that is how a deep web website works. Now, if you created a second page, you wanted to create a second page, just at the end, do slash, and for mine, I labeled mine different, dot HTML. Hit enter, and hello YouTube, please subscribe. So guys, that is how a deep web website is created uh, from scratch, completely free. You can do everything on your own. Now, of course, these guys have way more knowledge in programming, and that's why they're a little bit fancier. Some are a little bit not fancy. Um, you know, it kind of looks like what I just displayed here. But guys, this is how it's done. This is how there are uh, forums and hacker secret places down in the deep web and all that other stuff you see this is how it's done right here one of the many ways now there are other ways you could even have it hosted on somebody's homemade server and I guess trust that they have security and that you won't be caught but um, this is the way to do it on your own quickly and for free so Guys, thank you so much for watching. Sorry for my absence in the past few months, but I am back with some more knowledge and some more hacking tutorials, cryptography, uh, cybersecurity, etc., etc. So smash that subscribe button, give this video a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. InfoSec Operator, out.